Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was awakened with the abilities of Alucard Vampire, Naruto x Helsing. Here is short summary Alucard is taken to the region of fire following the Kyubi invasion and is sealed with the fox when he fades from his reality. But even the third Hokage was unaware of Naruto's darker secret. Accompany Naruto as he reawakens his vampire powers. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. A young man with black hair yells at a blimp in the sky, call it off major, this is not how I wanted to beat Alucard. A voice echoes over the ruined metropolis of London, sorry, Walter, but once it has begun there is no stopping it. A great river of blood shoots in the direction of a lone figure wearing an all-white costume with a matching all-white top hat. The figure concentrated his undivided attention on his fallen rival, not noticing the figure in a Nazi suit with cat ears and a similar tail approaching amid the ocean of blood. How the great angel of death has fallen. When the white figure eventually succumbs to the ocean, his eyes widen in knowledge of his inevitable defeat. Turning to face the two women, one of them is dressed in a black suit with a red tie and a white undershirt. The other wears a skimpy tan suit and is missing one arm, which is composed of dark energy. I am sorry my master but I must go and there is nothing I can do about this. The figure answers, no. Alucard, I am giving you a direct order, do not leave. As Alucard fades away, the girl he refers to as his servant is the last thing he sees, sobbing at his leaving. I am sorry this is the last time. Thinking, Alucard smiles as his vision fades. Alcabard's vision turns black, and he experiences emptiness. This won't be the last time they see me, I can guarantee it. Then Alucard hears the sounds of combat again. Then someone further below yells. Hold off the attack till the fourth Hokage arrives. Another voice cries, it's getting closer, don't let it near the village. Alucard is forced to open his eyes by the feeling of falling and discovers a massive fox snarling at everything. This fox was unusual not because of its size but rather because it had nine tails. Alucard laughs to himself, seems I am still alive. Can't get rid of me that easily fangirls haw. A fresh voice exclaims, summoning jutsu. Just then, a massive frog materializes out of a cloud of smoke and lands in front of the fox. Alucard glances down, realizing he is about to drop hard on the forest floor. Suddenly, one of the nine tails smacks into him, and Alucard grabs it. Naturally, because he is so little in comparison to the fox, the tail is unaware of Alucard's diminutive shape. The nine tails wonders, does he intend to seal me away or kill me? To the figure on his head, the enormous frog says, it's been nice knowing you, Minato. The figure says, it's been fun, Gamabunta. He continues by whispering, Naruto forgive me I hope this village will see you as the hero you are. What does that human think he is doing how could he hope to defeat such a monster well to say the least this will be entertaining? Alucard wonders. Minato cries, Shiki Fujin no Jutsu. Dead demon consuming seal. As a man wearing all white appears, holding a blade in his mouth. Alucard is blinded by a massive burst of white light and is drawn forward. A little child begins to wail as the man who is holding him becomes limp. An older man and a younger man approach the body. The taller of the two men adds, Minato Gaki you just had to go and sacrifice yourself. Jiraiya, Minato did what he had to as Hokage. A notion occurs to Jiraiya, Serutobi, his last name needs to be changed to Uzumaki. I agree Iwa would just love an excuse to attack the boy if they knew he was Minato's son. Serutobi replies. Jiraiya identifies the infant in his hands as Naruto Uzumaki. I know you'll be a great ninja one day. Naruto's mental landscape during this period when Alucard wakes up, he finds himself in enormous bars and asks, what the hell happened? He wipes his head and looks down to notice that his clothes have changed back to his count appearance. WHO is there. Yells a shadowy voice as he discovers he is still riding the fox's tail. Show yourself before I kill you, chuckles at this. You will try. The dark voice answers, bold words coming from someone who hides like a coward. Just who? What and where are you? Then the tail Alucard is resting on swings forward and is brought towards the fox's face, which looks at Alucard curiously. My name is Alucard or Vlad Dracula III. As for what I am, I am a vampire, 
the ultimate vampire to be more accurate. As for where I am that would be on one of your tails but I would like to look at my new roommate's face. The Kayubi growls, you are a vampire, you are no bigger than my smallest toenail. Alucard furrows his brow. Did I ever once say that vampires wear big monsters? Kayubi replies sarcastically, ha ing ha. Alucard sidesteps the topic and asks, so any idea where we are? We are inside an infant boy whose own father sacrificed his soul to the Shinigami to trap me and indirectly you inside of the boy to save the village from my wrath. How long will we be stuck here? Until one of two things happen. One the boy dies, or two he absorbs our powers. So I am stuck here for five years fan ing tastic. Five years, how can you tell that's how long it will take? Because that is when I will visit the boy and offer my powers to him as well as my knowledge. Why? Alucard laughs until he cries, an insane expression in his eyes, I want the boy to have my powers as well as I want him to spread fear of the night among the mortals once again. You are by far the craziest person I have ever met. The Kayubi grinned. I think you and I are going to get along just famously. Looking back to his new roommate, Alucard says, that reminds me I never got your name. I am the Kayubi no Yoko or Karama if my title gets too repetitive for you to say. Alucard glances down as if something is wrong and says, a pleasure to make your acquaintance Karama. Karama wonders, is something wrong? My guns they're both here, the jackal and the kujwal. Kumara asks, and that is strange how? The jackal was destroyed in battle and I dropped the kujwal when I was fighting so why do I have them back? Does it matter point as you have them? Alucard hops from the tail and crosses over to where a black and grey coffin lies. Good point. There is no point worrying about what has happened in the past. Alucard enters the coffin, shuts the lid, and says, Now if you don't mind, I am going to bed. It has been a long day and there are few hours in the night left. Karama synchronizes his senses with Naruto to hear what's happening outside and says, Good night then. A voice exclaims, We should kill the demon, and is followed by a chorus of applause. Then the room becomes silent with a burst of deadly purpose. This voice has strength behind it. Absolutely not. I will not let the child of my best friend die. Another voice asks, You would support a demon spawn lord Hyuga. Naruto is Kashina's son, not a demon spawn lord Uchiha. Karama is taken aback by the venom in those latter two sentences. A third voice says, Enough of this foolish bickering. I'll say, Yes, Sandame Sama. I have decided to name take care of him till he can live on his own, then he will live in an orphanage. Yes Lord Hokage. Five years later, Naruto is fleeing from a group of people with rusty clubs, bats, and bottles as they yell curses at him. One of the villagers exclaims, Die demon, your kind don't deserve to walk on this earth and should be put to death. Death to demons! exclaims another peasant. Naruto runs for five minutes before losing them in an alley. Naruto begins to cry as he reassures her that he is safe. When Alucard thinks he's had enough, Naruto sits there sobbing for a few minutes, asking, Why? Why do they hate me? I haven't done anything wrong. When Naruto awakens from Alucard's mental drawing, he finds a sewer. Alucard says, Come here, child, I will help you, from the cage. W. Dot who is there? Naruto asks, surveying the hallways he is in. Naruto moves ahead in the direction of the corridor he is facing, saying, Walk forward dear child, it's okay. I won't hurt you. Alucard exits the cage and approaches Naruto at the opening. W. Dot who are you? A little shaky Naruto asks. Alucard is struck with horror and despair when he hears the boy's voice because it makes him think of his past. Alucard bows to Naruto and says, I am Alucard, dear boy. I. I. Am Naruto. Naruto shudders at the strange expression in Alucard's eyes. I know dear boy for I am a part of you. You are? Naruto asks, glancing suspiciously at Alucard. Yes Naruto I am here to offer you my power in your time of need. Why would you help me? Because Naruto I too know the pain of being abused and the hopelessness of being abandoned. What kind of powers can you offer me Alucard san? Alucard draws the jackal and the kujwal and says, all of my vampiric abilities, as well as these. What are those Alucard? The one in my left hand is called the Jackal it's a 13mm anti-freak combat pistol, the one in my right hand is the Kujwal A.454 caliber semi-automatic combat pistol. If I gain your powers what will happen to you? 
I will still exist inside your psyche offering you help and advice as well as a friend when you need it and eventually I will be able to separate from your mind and live on my own but I will still be with you. To Alucard's amazement, Naruto hugs him like a son would a parent. Thank you Alucard-san you're the first person to ever be nice to me and actually mean it. Alright Alucard-san I'm ready to receive your powers, but before we begin I have a few questions if you don't mind. Alright ask away Naruto, will I have to drink blood? Yes you will but when you gain my powers it won't feel as unnatural it will feel as if it was something you have done all your life. Is that all I can eat? Yes as a vampire you can only sustain yourself on blood as anything else will taste disgusting. Alucard san that's the only place that I can afford and that will let me eat there. I forgot to mention that you can shapeshift into a different person entirely if you want. Naruto exclaims, cool, while Alucard recoils at the sudden commotion. Naruto inside voice please I have superhuman hearing as well as my other senses. Sorry Alucard san will I get that too? Yes. Any other powers I will be getting? Immortality, invulnerability, advanced regeneration, superhuman speed, superhuman strength, intangibility, defiance, manipulation of gravity, teleportation, telepathy, hypnosis, sharpshooting skills, summons of familiars, advanced combat, memory absorption, through victim's blood, and finally high resistance to most vampire weaknesses such as holy objects, sunlight, garlic, and all of our generally unknown weaknesses as well. Advanced regeneration. Yes you can basically take any wound it doesn't matter how severe and still bounce back up and continue fighting. Could I lose my head and still live? Yes and I have done so myself so I can prove its effectiveness. Will I have to sleep during the day? Yes but if you wake up during the day it won't kill you but if you want to maintain a normal sleep pattern I can ensure that you can sleep normally. Would you do that a la carte san I would appreciate it? Sure. But what happens when I fall in love with someone you said I am immortal won't the woman I love die? When that day comes you shall bite her on the neck transferring some of our power to her making her a vampire like you. However you must ensure she is a virgin first or when you suck her blood she will become a ghoul not a draculina. Alright a la carte sensei. Any more questions? Do you have any advice as to who to choose when it comes to love? Analyze every aspect their personality and figure what qualities you like about this person and look to the future and ask yourself this. Do I want to have to deal with this for the rest of eternity? If the answer to every question is, yes, then go through with it, but should you get one, no, then you don't do it simple as that. Thank you a la carte sensei. Oh one more thing, yes? Tell her this. Once you have turned your back on the light of day all the sun should mean is smoldering pain and a slow death. This will be essential for her to learn this however if you channel a bit more vampiric power into her she can walk in daylight without fear just like you can. Okay I will. Are you ready to receive my power? Yes a la carte sensei I am ready. Alright Naruto I warn you though this might hurt. Naruto grimaces at the idea, it's better than having to suffer at the hands of the villagers, I can tell you that right now. A la carte puts his coat around Naruto and says, okay, here we go. This causes Naruto to absorb a tremendous amount of power. Naruto can handle it at first, but soon he begins to howl in pain. After around three minutes, Alucard takes off Naruto's cloak and notices that the latter has changed. He is now a little bit taller, much more muscular, and wearing a black coat with orange flames at the coat's tail. He's dressed in fishnet tights, a scarlet undershirt, and gloves with finger holes. The kanji meaning, blood ninja, is written on the back of the black coat and his signature spiral is located on the left arm. Naruto's eyes have turned from blue to a vampire red, while his face has become more suntan. Both the kujual and the jackal are fastened to his waist by straps. Naruto then grinned as he peered down at his new look before turning to face Alucard again. Alucard sensei is there anything I can do for you in exchange for this awesome power? Could you change your mindscape to be more like a manor with an underground dungeon and a secret passage to said dungeon? Sure. One problem though. What's that? I don't know how. Here is what you do. Just imagine what I told you and it should happen it's pretty easy. Alright, this goes nowhere. Closing his eyes, Naruto begins to visualize what Alucard said. A few moments later, a mansion and a large cave to the right marked, dungeon, are revealed. To his dismay, Alucard examines the area and notes that it resembles the Helsing Manor. Alucard grinned and said, nicely done, Naruto. Why did you ask me to make an underground dungeon? Alucard begins to fade, saying, 
That is a story for another day, but for now I bid you adieu. Naruto opens his eyes to discover that his physical look has changed to reflect his mental state. Naruto says, Now this is cool, as he turns to face the sun. Hey Alucard Sensei, do you have any sunglasses? The light is blinding. Yes, Naruto, I do. Here you go. Alucard replies, as a gloved hand emerges from the shadows to extend a pair of sunglasses. The sunglasses have an orange tint to filter out as much light as possible, and they even have side covers to keep light from leaking into your peripheral vision. As soon as Naruto puts on his sunglasses, the brightness from the sun dims. Thanks, Alucard Sensei. When Naruto hears a noise a few feet away, he hurries towards it and discovers some bullies are picking on a girl with short blue hair and pale eyes. Naruto is leaving the alley with his hands in his pockets. So pathetic as if you could ever be a true Hyuga. The girl replies, L. Leave me alone. When Naruto emerges from the wall behind them, they all begin laughing at the girl, mocking her pleas for help. Please leave me alone. Please don't hurt me. If you were truly a Hyuga you would make a stop. Honestly if you're going to have a fighting competition with a woman you must have started off with the world's cruelest handicap. Naruto grumbles. The first one asks, and who are you to defend this pansy of a Hyuga? My name is no concern to the dead. Funny how a punk little kid thinks he can take us on. The man in the middle responds, yeah, unless you can make solid clones you don't stand a chance against all three of us. You're right it doesn't seem fair. Naruto rolled his eyes and said, fair smear, you can expect life to be fair all the time. Naruto then draws the kujual and points it toward the head of the first guy, saying, Oh well, I was going to suggest you all come at me at once but by your logic I should take you out one at a time. Wa well, what are you doing? Pulling the trigger, Naruto says, putting a bullet in you. The bullet lands squarely in his head, blowing it off. After giving each other a quick glance, the first one chooses to strike, but Naruto easily avoids it and kicks the other person's leg so hard that it separates at the knee. The child yells in agony, but Naruto silences him by taking hold of his mouth and drawing him closer to his own. The boy tries to make Naruto laugh in order to give an opening line, saying, I don't swing that way buddy. Neither do I but I can allow you to tell the council of what has happened here today. The boy begins to shake and asks, so what are you going to do? I am going to read you mind. The boy asks, looking perplexed, what? By drinking all of your blood. The young child begins to cry out like a puppy. www what? After sinking his teeth into the boy's neck, Naruto yells, Om nom, 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 and begins to drink his fill. Next, Naruto approaches the girl and extends his hand. Are you alright Miss Hyuga? The girl takes Naruto's hand and says, Why yes. Did I scare you Miss Hyuga? A little. I am sorry Miss Hyuga. In a quiet voice, the girl says, My name is Hanada. Naruto says, Grinning, My name is Naruto. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hanada muses to herself, He is really cute and nice to me, but I wonder is he just being nice because of my family? Naruto glances to Hanada san and asks, Is something wrong? Are you merely showing me kindness because my family is? Hanada asks, gazing into his crimson, spiraling eyes. No, I am being nice because you seem like a nice person and I hope we can be good friends. Naruto grins again. After Hanada returns the smile, Naruto turns around. A man in his mid twenties says, Hanada sama, are you hurt? He has a cloth wrapped around his head and is dressed traditionally. Hanada turns to face the man and says, No, I am fine thanks to Naruto kun here. The Hyuga member muses to himself, Why is Hanada sama around the demon brat? She should be accompanied by someone from the branch family at all times. Next, Naruto faces him. Naruto glares at the man, asking, where were you when Hanada was being picked on? I had other things to attend to I was in the courtyard of the Hyuga clan when I heard a loud bang and came running to see if Hanada sama was hurt. Naruto turns to Hanada and says, Well Hanada chan is fine no thanks to you. Hanada's head hangs, but Naruto tilts it back up, saying, I know you are strong, you can and will become a great Hyuga one day. Naruto smiles at her, and Hanada smiles back. Hanada remember this. You are only as weak as you let others make think you are. Okay Naruto kun I will get strong for you. Naruto pats Hanada on the hand and says, I hope to see you again soon, Hanada chan. Then he turns to go. 
Seven years pass. Naruto enters the academy with his trademark silly grin on his face, but his vampire senses warned him to be wary of Mizuki. All right class today is the big day would everyone line up and we will call you forward one at a time. Aruka responds. Though many tend to underestimate someone who wears orange and shouts, believe it, every five minutes, Naruto laughs to himself despite knowing that doing so might jeopardize his purpose. Naruto, you really are a little devil, don't you? Alcare chuckles. What can I say? It's in my nature as the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko. Karama chooses to add his two cents, saying, your take after both Alucard and myself kit. Well it's been fun but now I have to go fail my test. Iruka remarks, next Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto moves forward and enters the following chamber. Naruto exclaims, I am going to pass this time, believe it. Iruka glances at a clipboard and says, okay, Naruto first transformation jutsu transforms into the third Hokage. When the fog clears a little, Naruto yells, transform, and assumes the appearance of an older, highly matured woman. Got you, Aruka sensei that was my Y jutsu, Naruto exclaims as he changes back, causing everyone in the room to bleed from the nose. Outside the window, Jiraiya thinks to himself, that kid is a freaking genius, and starts to get nosebleeds. The Kayubi tells Naruto, someone is watching who shouldn't. I know Kayubi Aero sensei, stop calling me that. Why do I think it fits perfectly? Laughs Alcabard. I tolerate it from you but not from the kid. Oh my goodness, it's hilarious. Naruto whines. To you maybe but to me it's degrading. All right then fine I will come up with a new one for you then. Just call me Karama for Kami's sake. Naruto snickers, fine. Arrow Karama. God damnit Naruto. Alcabard intervenes, saying, leave the kid alone, Karama. Karama complains, fading into Naruto's subconscious, you know I am going to get you back for that. Aruka cries at the genin, Naruto, Aruka yells the hokage calm down yes lord hokage please demonstrate a clone jutsu mizuki responds blind fool he has no idea that i am going to use him to get the forbidden scroll to lord orochimaru but mizuki sensei i can't do clone jutsu then i fear you will fail naruto aruka remarks no i have to pass in order to become hokage then perform the clone jutsu all right naruto complains clone jutsu his chakra whirls, and two lifeless looking clones materialize on the ground. Aruka says, I am sorry Naruto you fail, with a dejected expression. With his hands in his pockets, Naruto says, damn. Karama chuckles, and the Emmy goes too. On stage, Naruto repeats what he had imagined in his head. Thank you all so much for this honor I want to thank my teacher, Karama no Kayubi, get up here fuzzball. Thank you so much I want to thank. Well, me for being such a trickster. Alcabard murmurs, Knock it off, you two. When Naruto feels a hand on his shoulder and turns to see Mizuki standing there, he snickers and says, Fine. Don't worry about the clone jutsu, Naruto. I know of another way you can pass. You do? A beaming Naruto asks, Yea, all you need to do is steal the forbidden scroll from the Hokage's office and make to the forest of death. If you can do that and learn a technique from it, you will pass as it simulates a shinobi mission. All right, where do I meet you? At the edge of the forest of death by 8 p.m. tonight. Naruto yells, All right, I do it, believe it, and leaves. Alucard said, Naruto, you should notify the Hokage of the change in status of your mission. I'll do that, you're right. Naruto jumps off. Naruto strolled over to the Hokage's secretary. I am here to see the old man. The secretary gives him a look and says, You're not going in there, brat. The secretary's eyes get crimson as Naruto drops his glasses and raises his finger, saying, You're going to let me see the Hokage. Ugh, ah, but don't say I didn't ask nicely. I, I, pressing the intercom button, the secretary says, You're going to let me see the Hokage. Hokage sama, you have someone here to see you, says it's very important. The Hokage's voice asks, Who is it? Naruto sama. Send him in. Right this way, Naruto sama. Naruto enters the office and says, Thank you. Naruto, what do you have to tell me today? It's an update on my mission. Oh, all right, then let's hear it. I have confirmed that the traitor is Mizuki. Oh, and how so you just can't throw accusations like that around without proof? He offered me a secondary exam to pass the academy. 
That is hardly treacherous but I am going to hold my questions to end of this report. He told me that if I could take the forbidden scroll in your office it would count as shinobi mission and I would pass. That is certainly troubling and having a mere academy student take a precious object from the Hokage definitely warrants treason. Your instructions Hokage-sama. Proceed as planned and catch Mizuki in the act. Yes, Hokage-sama. Naruto says as he bows and leaves, leaving the secretary with a distant expression. With a shake of his head, Naruto turns to leave and returns to his flat, where he opens the door. After checking all around for traps and not finding any, Naruto settles down on his bed to wait for his job to be finished. Six hours later, Naruto wakes up, checks his watch, and discovers it is 6.30. A knock on the door follows. Naruto says, who is there, and pulls out his guns out of caution but he recognizes the voice that answers. Hanada is utilizing the code they devised to make sure she is not a ninja who has been altered to resemble her in, the sunshine that lights the darkness. The fox welcomes the rabbit to his den and promises her no harm. Replies Naruto. Hanada opens the door, enters, and shuts it behind her. She then rushes to embrace Naruto. Naruto-kun I have really missed you. I have missed you too my precious vixen. For how long must our hearts suffer this torment? Naruto stares into Hanada's eyes and says, After tonight, our pain will end, I promise you. Promise? Promise. I don't go back on my word because that's my. Hanada is Naruto on the cheek. Ninja way. Not just yours but mine as well. Hanada I need to go I have a mission to complete but, when I come back I'll take you somewhere nice. Naruto and Hanada exit Naruto s Hanada with a, all right. Naruto kun. Then, as night falls, Naruto makes his way to the Hokage's office. When Naruto enters Hokage's office and conceals his vampire abilities using his powers, the Hokage forgot to put away the phony scroll, so Naruto takes it. Naruto enters the forest of death by walking through the wall and then leaping into the darkness. As he gets closer, he notices a recognizable chakra signature. Rewind. Five minutes following Naruto's theft of the scroll. When Serutobi enters his office, his fictitious prohibited scroll is gone. Then, chuckling to himself, Serutobi sounds the alarm, saying, So you have gone into action, Naruto. The forbidden scroll has been taken. Serutobi fakes rage when all of the chunin and junin that are available have gathered. A mere academy student made it past half of you here and managed to grab the forbidden scroll of the Hokage. Care to explain how this happened? Kakashi goes forward but is hushed by a quick blast of the Hokage's killing intent. Sandame sama we had no idea anyone was here it's not like he knocked anyone out to get it. As crazy as this sounds it's as if he just walked as one with the shadows, grabbed the scroll, and walked out. Then Danzo moves forward, saying, I don't care how he did it, I just want him found and the scroll returned. Hokage sama it is possible that the Kayubi could be influencing the boy to the point that he will convince the boy to break the seal. Kakashi responds, that's impossible. How so? Danzo queries. Not even the Kaiubi had the power to walk as one with the shadows and Minato Sensei was the best sealing jutsu expert second only to Jiraiya Sama, who I will remind you, said that the seal couldn't break unless Naruto had the key which Jiraiya Sama showed us to prove that it was in safe hands. Enough! exclaims Serutobi. Find him. I will look using my crystal ball jutsu. When you find him you were to ask politely for the scroll explain gently the consequences of his actions then bring him here. If he is injured in any way the inflictor of the wound will be executed without trial. Am I understood? Yes, Hokage-sama. Every ninja answers at once. The ninja scatter, saying, now go. Serutobi enters his office and finds Naruto waiting for him. Why are you here you should be on your mission. I am on my mission Hokage-sama I am merely a shadow clone here to deliver a message. What is that? Make sure no ninja other than Aruka find me. Why? I don't want anyone but him and Mizuki Teme to learn of my vampiric transformation. So the rumors were true you were a vampire? Yes, I am the No Life King's reincarnation. The clone then disperses, and Serutobi takes out his crystal ball to observe Naruto's advancement. Ah okay, I will make sure. Finalize the flashback. Naruto arrived at the location where he planned to set off his trap when Alucard converses with himself. What was the point of stealing a fake scroll when the real one would work better as bait? If I took the real one there is a chance that my transformation could destroy it, 
so to be safe I took the fake because the Hokage can always make another one but the real one is irreplaceable. I see well while we wait time for me to uphold my part of this mission. Teaching you how to use the Cromwell invocation. Alright what do I need to do? Repeat after me. Alright. Releasing control art restriction systems. Releasing control art restriction systems. 3, 2, 1. Approval of situation recognized. 3, 2, 1. Approval of situation recognized. Commencing the Cromwell invocation. Commencing the Cromwell invocation. Ability restrictions lifted for limited use until the enemy has been rendered silent. Ability restrictions lifted for limited use until the enemy has been rendered silent. Good now for the hand signs. There are hand signs? Well sort of. What you need to do is when you say the first two lines you hold your hands out to the side. When you say the third line you raise your hands to the side of your head, and then finally when you say ability restrictions lifted, you hold your hands in front of your eye in two L's one facing up the other facing down. Your right hand will face up and away from you, while your left will face down and towards you. Once that happens let the rest take care of itself your body will know what to do. Then, while Naruto sits there reading the scroll, Aruka appears in front of him. All right, thanks Alucard Sensei. Aruka appears scarred. Naruto, what have you done? I did what Mizuki Sensei told me. If I could take the Forbidden Scroll and learn a technique from it then I would pass. And guess what, I learned the Shadow Clone Jutsu from the scroll. What are you talking about Naruto? There is no such exam like that. Well you were right about that but I am on a mission. You are? Aruka asks, looking shocked. Yehokage Sama knew there was a traitor in the academy but he didn't know who it was and he could just pull every instructor into the Department of Torture and Interrogation. So he sent me. Are you already a ninja? Officially no but unofficially yes. My abilities were kept a secret even to the Hokage until 20 minutes ago and I was to weed out the traitor. This is a B-rank mission my first ever. What would happen if the traitor proved too much for you? Back up is a hair's breadth away. Who is your backup? Hiyashi Hayuga. Does he know this? Yes he knows Hanada chan has been acting as messenger between us as I can't be seen entering the Hayuga compound. Wait Hanada chan I thought you liked Sakura. Nope it was all an act, now Mizuki is coming I can sense him so play dumb okay Iruka sensei. What do you mean if you learned a technique you would pass? Mizuki descends on the tree in front of the two of them and asks, what do you think, Iruka? Naruto you are a bad boy you stole the Hokage's forbidden scroll of sealing such an act as punishable by death. Iruka queries, why would you do this, Mizuki? Because he is the. Mizuki don't it's forbidden. Mizuki exclaims, Nine Tails, with delight. You see Naruto the nine-tailed fox was never killed he was sealed away inside of you. That's the reason everyone hates you, the reason why you'll never become Hokage, you are the nine-tailed fox. Lowering his head, Naruto says, So I am the fox A. Eh? A few seconds later, he bursts out laughing, Ha, 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 ha. Ha, a ha ha ha, a ha ha ha, a ha ha ha, a ha ha ha, speaking to the sky. What is so funny, demon brat? As bats fly all around him, Naruto rises up and holds his hands out in front of him, saying, The fact that now I can fight to kill because you broke an S ranked law. It's time to play Mizuki Teme. Naruto exclaims, laughing. Mizuki is startled by his response, but he quickly gets over it and tosses a big shuriken at him. While Naruto is amused and doesn't see him, Aruka does and leaps to block the weapon. When he hears the sound of steel hitting flesh, Naruto glances down to discover that Aruka has protected him from the shuriken. Why, Aruka sensei? He asks, his expression bewildered. Aruka falls as she says, because. Naruto you're precious to me, you're my student and I won't let you die. Naruto turns to confront Mizuki, and his anger is obvious. Naruto glares at him, saying, you have just made a huge mistake, Mizuki Teme. Still, Mizuki gives the ram a hand signal. Naruto, you set off my trap. Mizuki chuckles. As several explosive tags detonate, propelling Naruto onward, he exclaims, oh boy. Mizuki laughs and says, stupid demon brat, you're no match for me. Suddenly, a voice calls from a nearby tree. Hey dandy. Mizuki turns to face Naruto, who is standing on the side of a tree, and exclaims, what the? 
Naruto yells, you missed. While falling to the ground and yelling, whoop, 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 whoop. Mizuki yells, die you brat. As she hurls the other shuriken at Naruto, striking him squarely but passing through him as opposed to killing him. Naruto lifts his hands to his sides and says, releasing control art restriction systems 3. Dot 2. Dot 1. He then raises his hands to his head and says, oh shame for you, you activated my a la carte. And Naruto says, approval of situation a recognized. Commencing the Cromwell invocation. Then he makes the necessary hand gesture. Then, as Naruto transforms and the energy condenses around him, dark energy blasts from him. He is wearing a black leather jumper with a giant eye in the middle. Ability restrictions lifted for limited use until the enemy has been rendered silent. What the hell are you? Your death. As Naruto advances, a sword appears in his palm. He swings it, but Mizuki blocks with another big shuriken. However, the sheer force of the blade causes Mizuki to fall to the ground. Mizuki screams as she looks at him with fear in his eyes. You're a demon you're nothing but a dog of this village and this vilages prized. The dog snarls, silence, and then transforms into a dog, saying, I am a dog then your dog food. The dog then lunges forward, grinning broadly. A voice calls out to Naruto, Naruto stop. The dog stops, and when he looks around, he sees the Hokage and a few Anbu standing there. He has violated your law which calls for death upon such event as it is broken. We need him alive in order to interrogate him and find out who ordered this. Yes, Hokage-sama. Naruto then gives the dog the order to come back to him. Clutching at his chest, Mizuki says to himself, I think I just shit my pants as my life flashed before my eyes. One of the Anbu moves forward, chakra inhibitors on his wrists and legs, Mizuki Sakana you're under arrest for high treason and conspiring against Konoha and her people. Mizuki screams when they make him walk forward against his will. You monster, demon, devil c-o-n-s-e-v-e-d by the bleakest womb. I will have my revenge. Mark my words I will have my revenge. The other Anbu shouts, shut up, striking him unconscious. Once they go, Naruto bursts into laughter. Ha, 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 ha. What's so damn funny Naruto? It's nothing. Naruto continues to laugh as he leaves. Still yelling into the night, Naruto gestures his hand in acknowledgement. Naruto stop by later and you can pick up your pay. Iruka looks across at the Hokage. Iruka queries, just what is Naruto? The reincarnation of the great vampire king, Dracula. What happened to the little orange goofball who drew graffiti all over the Hokage monuments? Actually that was me. Serutobi exclaims, what, in response to the expression on Aruka's face. Just kidding. The Naruto you know died seven years ago and gave birth to the monster Naruto is now. So Naruto has no humanity in him. No it's there and in quite surprising amounts given what he is. So Naruto actually cares about people. Yes Hinata in particular I suggest you never cross him Aruka. The Hokage sadly shakes his head, saying, that much is apparent I mean he almost killed Mizuki. Aruka looks perplexed and says, no he didn't. He would have eaten him. Aruka appears shocked by this information. E eat ten him. Yes the dog was about to consume him and absorb everything Mizuki was, he would have become one of the countless souls trapped in Naruto's body. WWWH at. Aruka begins to shake. Naruto is a vampire who devours humans and their blood which traps them in his body and grants him more power. Wow what a terrifying kid. Well I thinks it time we call it a night I have a lot of paperwork to do. Good night, Hokage-sama. Aruka turns to leave, and Serutobi muses inwardly. The Hokage shakes his head and returns to his office, feeling a presence close by. Naruto has changed into the great ninja he said he would but never once in my wildest dreams did I ever suspect he would become a creature of the night. Then Serutobi hears a giggle. You can come out now Naruto, I know you're there. Naruto emerges from the wall and says, I guess I have a long way to go as far as stealth goes. Serutobi says, well that's a new trick. Once more, Naruto chuckles, what can I say? So what can I do for you Naruto? I want to reveal to my teammates of my vampiric heritage. Why Naruto? Because my teammates have a right to know the truth. Naruto says, all right, if you're sure. Serutobi approaches his desk and gets to work on his documents. 
As he turns to go, Naruto has an epiphany. One last thing. Naruto spins around once more. The Hokage glances up from his paperwork and asks, Yes, Naruto? In Alucard's life he had a master Sir Integra Fairbrook Wingets Helsing. I ask you to be my master. Naruto this is a serious question and I am not going to be your master simply so you can be more like Alucard. You fail to understand. Then explain. In order to release to level 0 I need someone as my master so that he, she could give me the order to do so. I am trying to figure out do it on my own but I am having no luck and a couple of days ago Alucard and the Kyubi figured out what to do but I must first have a master to order me to do so, then I can do so on my own. Level 0? Yes that would be my true form when Count Dracula would truly reawaken. Oh okay. Then, allow me to be of service, Naruto. Naruto shivers before Serutobi. Naruto says as he leaves, good to be in your service, my master. Serutobi glances down and notices a little note that says, Some days I don't know what's worse, that boy and his schemes are this damn paperwork. Try using shadow clones if you want to finish your paperwork more quickly. Although you might not have the same amount of reserves as before, two basic clones could finish the job in one third of the time. Sincerely, Godem Hokage, also known as Naruto Uzumaki. Serutobi would wake up half the village that night with the cry, Oh, you have got to be kidding me. The Academy Ninja who had graduated were seated the following day, awaiting the assignment of teams by Uruka and Mizuki. Sakura remarks to the class, Looks like Naruto Baka failed again. Most of the students snicker. Everyone was startled when Hanada suddenly rose to her feet and showed a strong killing intent, since they had assumed that the sweet, helpless Hanada wouldn't even harm a fly. With the words, You pink haired. Hanada summons her by a Kugan. Everyone is even more startled because nobody anticipated Hanada would not only raise her voice to anyone, but also to such an extent that she appeared prepared to kill Sakura. But then she sits back down, gathers herself. Hanada is stronger than she was before she would make an excellent mother to my children and coupled with the Byakugan my new Uchiha clan would be invincible. Sasuke is thinking to himself. Then he stands up and approaches Hanada, who gives him a disgusted expression. Hanada gives him a frown and asks, what could you possible want? I was just wondering if you guys wanted to grab lunch today and get to know each other a little better. At that moment, Hanada was greeted with a chorus of screaming Sasuke fangirls accusing her of snatching their Sasuke kun. Hanada, meanwhile, was only staring at the wall and sensing Naruto's presence. A little while later, Sasuke takes Hanada by the arm and turns her to face him. Sasuke slaps her, saying, Listen here when Uchiha talks to you, you listen. A loud, bang, then occurs, creating a large hole in the wall behind Sasuke and Hanada that is between them. Naruto walks out of the wall, the Kujual in his palm smoking slightly from the rifle shot. I didn't want to reveal myself so soon but there are lines I don't let anyone cross and you, Uchiha scum, just crossed two of them. Naruto-kun. Hanada charge and give Naruto a hug. Naruto smiles and says, it's good to see you too, Hanada-chan. Sasuke responds, no way you're Naruto. Ye tell him Sasuke-kun, if you really were Naruto you would try to ask me out and you hugging Hanada isn't helping your already non-existent chances with me. Sakura screams. Waves a gloved hand, I know and I don't care, Naruto says. Sakura is enraged and asks, did you just wave me off? The whole class falls silent at this remark, even Sasuke, who is surprised, Oh I am sorry Sakura did I do it too fast for you allow me to slow it down for you. Naruto fucked her off, calling her, pink haired. Sakura yells, rushes at Naruto, and tries to hit him, but Naruto holds her hand and says, in a cool, irritated voice, if anyone is a it's Hanada for trying to steal my Sasuke kun then runs up to you and hugs you. Naruto bares his teeth in a vampiric sneer, if you ever call Hanada A again I will personally see that you can never be a ninja by breaking every bone in your body and ripping out your eye sockets. Hey loser what are you doing here this is for people who graduated the academy not dropout losers who can't even do a simple clone jutsu. Sasuke is chuckling at Naruto. Naruto gestures to his headband and says, I am a ninja of Konoha just like you and everyone else in this room. Yay right I bet you just stole that headband from an actual shinobi just to show up here and fool us all into thinking you're a ninja but heads up loser it isn't working. If you doubt my story talk to Uruka sensei or even the hokage I don't care just stay out of my face you uchiha runt. I'll kill you. 
Sasuke yells as he charges at him with a kanai in his hand. Naruto, however, just takes the weapon and points his kujual at Sasuke's shoulder. Naruto then shoots, but the bullet just grazes Sasuke's shoulder. Sasuke exclaimed, What the hell loser you could have killed me. But I didn't, you're only bleeding you're not missing an arm. What are you saying? If I had really wanted to shoot your shoulder it would have been blown off along with the arm. How could you know that? This is a high caliber gun if I had hit your shoulder you would be missing an arm and would most likely be dying of blood loss. Sakura queries, what that hell is that thing? My .454 caliber semi-automatic combat pistol. Naruto looks at the weapon. But that's not all it can be watch. Naruto concentrates on his kujual and jackal, imagining them to be wakazashi. The weapons begin to change and become dual wakazashi attached on his back. How did you do that? Sasuke inquires. As a Uchiha I demand you to tell how you did that and show me how to do it so that I can strengthen my clan. I am unable to. Naruto, I told you to show me loser. And I said I can't. Why not loser? Because these weapons only respond to me and my power no one else's. Loser, I demand you, Sasuke starts, but Naruto cuts him off because of how much killer intent there is. Naruto growls. What do you know about me, Sasuke? You know nothing about my struggles, my pain, and everything that I have lost. Naruto peers over Sasuke's shoulder. Sasuke nods, signaling Naruto to continue. If you want, I can fix that up for you. Or would you prefer someone else to do it? Since when could you heal wounds? Since a while ago now hold still. Naruto snaps Kayubi a little help. I still don't know why you're doing this. Kurama grumbles using his Yang Chakra to heal the wound after a few seconds the wound patches up and the clothing sew back together. There you go now leave me alone. Naruto walks away combat boots echoing around as he walks to his seat and sits down. Hinata runs over and sit next to him. Ino looks over at Naruto and decides to publicly apologize for her conduct so she walks over. Naruto. Ino says Naruto looks over to her, yes? I just wanted to say, I am sorry for the way I treated you. You're joking right? No Naruto I am not, while I still am after Sasuke I still want to be friends with you. Apology accepted. Naruto holds out his hand to shake Ino's. At first Ino is hesitant but shakes his hand. After a couple minutes Uruka walks in and says. Congratulations to all of you that passed now it's time to divide up the teams. I hope Naruto-kun and I are together but if we aren't it's not like we won't see each other. Hanada thinks to herself. Team 7 will be Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. Your sensei will be Kakashi Hitaki. Naruto turns to Hanada and says. Don't worry Hanada-chan I will visit you whenever I can and if you ever need me take this. Naruto hands Hanada a small mirror and continues, if you ever want to talk to me just say, show me the bird of Hermes and my face will appear on the mirror and I have a similar mirror and will be able to see and hear you. Hanada hugs the mirror to her chest and smiles at Naruto. I will treasure it always. She says. Team 8 will be Hanada Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, and Shino Aburame. Your sensei is Kurunai Yuhi. Uruka continues. Excellent I can use this opportunity to sweep Hanada off her feet and she will forget all about that loser Naruto and swoon into my arms. Kiba thinks to himself perversely. Team 9 is still in circulation so we will skip that and go to Team 10 which will consist of Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi and Shikamaru Nara. Your sensei is Asuma Serutobi. After this announcement everyone gets with their teammates. Naruto s Hinata on the cheek and walks over to his team. When Naruto walks over Sakura is repeatedly screeching her victory over Ino about being with Sasuke. Naruto sat down at the far end and pulled out the Kujual Wakazashi and starts polishing it. After five minutes the door opens and two people walk in one girl the other a boy. Naruto looks up from his Wakazashi and he recognizes the two Junin standing before them it's Kurunai and Asuma. Team 8 with me. Kurunai says, Hanada, Kiba and Shino stand up and walk out. Team 10 with me. Asuma says taking out a cigarette out and lights it as Ino, Shikamaru and Choji get up and walk to him. Aruka grabs his clipboard and starts walk out but Naruto calls out. Aruka sensei. Aruka turns to him, yes Naruto? Aruka asks. Did you mean it? Mean what? Aruka looks confused. That I was precious to you. Yes I meant it Naruto how about you and I grab some ramen later. 
sure. Naruto smiles, then Iruka walks out. Naruto looks at his teammates, wake me up when Kakashi sensei gets here. How do you know he won't be here soon? Sakura asks confused. Kakashi sensei is a very powerful junin but he has a very unfortunate habit of being three hours late to any obligation where he is needed except when he is called upon to defend the village. With that Naruto closes his eyes. After a few seconds Naruto hears a voice. All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Naruto's eyes open as an unfamiliar scene plays before him and a driving pain pierces his heart. Have I been bested, sir? Naruto asks. Yes you are bested. This is not a nightmare you will be awaking from. Your castles are plundered, your dominions in ruin, your servants destroyed, and the girl has fled this place forevermore. She will never be your count. The voice of the only man to ever to beat him. The man raises his hand and slams it into the stake already deep in his heart. Ah! Naruto screams in pain the man grabs his coat. You are judged and found wanting vampire king. You have nothing, you are nothing. Naruto's eyes start closing, nothing. Naruto's eyes shoot open to see Sakura looking at him. What? Your eye is bleeding. Sakura says concerned. Naruto raises his hand a drop of blood falls on his palm. Dreaming. Naruto disregards it, it was just a dream, it was nothing. What were you dreaming about loser? Sasuke asks your own failure. Yes and no, Naruto looks over, I was dreaming of a failure, but I was also remembering my first defeat. When I kicked your butt in our first sparing match. Sasuke smirks. No, Naruto looks over, my defeat at the hands of the man known as, the destroyer of monsters how I hate him. Who is that? Sakura asks, Abraham Van Helsing. Impossible. How so Sakura? He died over 200 years ago. Don't remind me. Naruto shouts. Damn him. Naruto slams his hand on the table. You are just barely 12. How could you have been beaten by Abraham Van Helsing? My sensei's memories are my memories. What? In my blood, soul and mind resides the ancient vampire king, Dracula. As such I am his reincarnation I was remembering through him. You're a vampire? Sakura asks stepping back her pupils shrinking in fear. Yes I am. But, how you walk in the day? I am immune to sunlight. Sakura looks scared. Aaa are you going to drink my BBBB blood? No? You're not? No nor am I going to drink anyone else's unless I absolutely have to. Why? Sakura looks suspicious, because despite my status I am not heartless. Why are you telling us this? Sasuke asks, because as my teammates you have the right to know but all I ask you is not to reveal this knowledge to the public I just want to live a normal life. Naruto looks over at them pleadingly. Naruto gets up. I will leave you two to discuss it in private I have to use the restroom. He then walks out and closes the door behind him. Sasuke-kun we need to tell someone the public has the right to know there is a vampire walking amongst them. Sakura looks panicked. Don't Sakura. Sasuke says, why Sasuke-kun? Sakura looks confused. He trusted us to not tell and who would believe us in the first place we are genin that just graduated despite my status of a Uchiha most people wouldn't listen. Also based on the fact he has enough crap in his life already I have seen him being chased from stores and watch as mobs attacked and beat upon him every day he deserves someone who he can trust. Alright Sasuke-kun I will follow your lead on this. Then the door opens and Naruto walks back and then an idea strikes him and opens his ninja pouch and sets a tripwire as well as a couple of smoke bombs and grabs a chalk eraser from the board and places it over the door. Naruto what are you doing? This is Kakashi sensei's punishment for being late. Naruto laughs. He is a junin he won't fall for that you childish baka. Naruto walks back to the desk and sits down. After a couple of minutes the door opens and Kakashi walks through the chalk eraser falls on his head then the smoke bombs go off and Naruto quicker than anyone can blink throws two kanai into the smoke. A clang issues out as the smoke clears they see Kakashi had blocked both kanai. Okay first impression I hate you all. Baka. Sakura says shaking her head. Got him cha. Her inner Sakura cheers, follow me to the roof. Kakashi says then Sasuke. Sakura, and Naruto stand up and walk towards Kakashi and up to the roof. When they walk up Kakashi sits on the railing and points to the benches indicating his students to sit. Why don't you tell me about yourselves? What do you mean? 
Naruto asks, dreams, likes, dislikes you know stuff like that. Why don't you start Kakashi Sensei? Sakura asks, alright, my name is Kakashi Hataki, and I like a lot of things and dislike a lot of things and my dreams aren't your concern. What crap is that we only got your name? Sakura yells. Alright you next Naruto. Kakashi, my name is Naruto Alucard Uzumaki. I am the reincarnation of the great vampire king Dracula. My likes include ramen, inspiring terror in my foes, pranking and Hinata-chan. My dislikes include people who hate someone for something they can't control. My dream is to become the next Hokage. Okay that's a scary thought. Kakashi thinks to himself, okay you next Sakura. My name is Sakura Haruno I like. She turns her head to Sasuke and bursts into a fit of giggles and can't finish. Okay. Kakashi rolls his eye. Now you Sasuke. My name is Sasuke Uchiha I don't really like anything and what I have is not a dream because I will make it a reality. I will restore my clan to its former glory and destroy a certain someone. Alright. Tomorrow you will have a test so get a good night's sleep and don't eat anything because there will be a large amount of exertion tomorrow and I don't want you throwing up. Kakashi smiles at them and disappears in a whirl of leaves. Hey Sasuke-kun would you like to grab lunch with me? Sakura asks. No Sakura. Sasuke walks off. Then Sakura turns to Naruto. Naruto you idiot this is all your fault. Sakura tries to hit him but Naruto jumps off saying. See you later Sakura I have things I need to do. Then a figure jumps down a large gun strapped to her back and dark energy making up her arm. Sakura turns to look at the figure. Who are you? Sakura asks, my name is Sarah's Victoria I am looking for my master I heard from a source that he was transported here. Who is your master? I doubt you know his name and even if I told it to you I don't think he would be going by it. Then describe him maybe I can point you out to him. Okay he is in a black charcoal suit, leather riding boots, and a flamboyant, intricately knotted red cravat, covered by a full length, red frock overcoat with cape. He also wears a red fedora hat with a wide, floppy brim and a pair of circular, heavily tinted, wire-framed orange sunglasses with goggle sidings. Sorry I haven't seen anyone like that but maybe I have heard his name before. Okay his name is Alucard. Sakura's eyes widen at the name. I've heard that name. You have? Sarah's looks confused. Yay a kid on my squad by the name of Naruto called himself Naruto Alucard Uzumaki. Where did he go? I don't know he went that way but where I don't know. Sakura point to the direction Naruto jumped off. Sarah's takes to the skies and flies after the boy she saw. I am coming master. Sarah's thinks to herself. After a couple minutes of flight she see her target. Naruto turns to see her land in front of him. Sarah's it can't be. Naruto's eyes widen, master? Sarah's asks. Sarah's it's good to see you again. Naruto walks up and ruffles her hair. Master how are you? Sarah's asks, well I would like to say I have been well but that would be a blatant lie. The question for you is how did you get here? Well I realized that planets had aligned the night when you faded from our world. So in order to recreate the event I would need to wait for the next planetary alignment, then wait for sunrise to allow myself fade as well so here I am. Wait the planets only align once every 57 years. Yay I know. It's only been 12 years since Alucard came to this world. Not in our world it has been 57 years. How is Sir Integra? Sarah's gets a sad look on her face. She is dead. What happened? Naruto asks shocked. She got lung cancer from the cigars she smoked. Did she at least die peacefully? Naruto asks sadly. Yes she died in her sleep she just stopped breathing and that was it. Then Hinata walks in on this. Naruto who is this? Hinata asks suspiciously. This is my friend Sarah's Victoria she was a servant of Alucard she managed to make her way into our world. It is nice to meet you Miss Victoria. Hinata smiles. Sarah's this is Hinata, my girlfriend. It is nice to meet you too Hinata-sama. Sarah's bows. That's a stretch calling me Sama. Hinata waves her arms. You are master's girlfriend so it seems to me you're higher on the food chain. Sarah's I go by Naruto now while I have Alucard's memories, powers, and experiences but I am my own man now. Oh my apologies master. Sarah's bows. Naruto looks at her. You don't need to call me master but if that makes you feel comfortable then I won't stop you. Thank you master. Sarah's bows again. 
The Hokage will want to know of your presence here so we need to go see him and see if we can get you placed on a squad. Naruto, Saras and Hinata walk towards the Hokage's office while Naruto and Saras catch up on what has happened in the 57 years since they last saw one another. Ow, stupid cat. Naruto roars as Tora the, bane of Genin digs her claws into Naruto's face. Master calm down. Saras shakes her head. Maybe you would like cat claws dug into your skin. Naruto retaliates. Kakashi shakes his head at the antics of Saras and Naruto. Well maybe if you didn't terrify the poor thing with black dog Baskerville she wouldn't react this way. Saras counters. Stop you two. Kakashi cuts in, yes sensei. Saras and Naruto says simultaneously. Loser. Sasuke murmurs under his breath. Naruto hears this and turns around and holds the jackal up to Sasuke's chin. Look here Uchiha. I don't like you but I respect your prowess as a ninja. However continue to insult me and you will have what we call in the business a training accident, am I clear? Naruto growls. Naruto Baka leaves Sasuke-kun alone. Sakura screeched. Listen I don't have time to argue with the help, so do me a favor Sakura and shut up. Naruto glances over at her. Sakura's jaw drops as does Kakashi's as he had heard rumors that Naruto was not all he appeared to be and that his crush on Sakura was fake but for him to be this cold-hearted shocked him. Naruto you should get along with your teammates. So they can backstab me later when I let my guard down, no thanks. Naruto scoffs. Naruto doesn't seem to trust anyone with the few exceptions of Saras, the Ichiraku family, Hanada, Aruka, and the Hokage. He can trust me as I was one of the Anbu who protected him from mobs though he doesn't know that. I see no harm in telling him later on. Kakashi thinks to himself, and then Naruto's next comment brings him out of his thoughts. Is this it for today or are we doing more D rank missions? This is it for today. Kakashi says giving his signature eye smile. Kakashi sensei is something on your mind? Saras asks. What do you mean? Kakashi turns to her. Do not underestimate my senses I can practically taste the indecision rolling off you something has you confused. It's nothing that concerns you Saras however it does concern Naruto. If it concerns master then it concerns me as well. Fine Naruto Saras I need to talk to the both of you after we report in for our completed mission. Yes sensei. Ten minutes later team 7 had returned the cat to the fire daimyo's wife who proceeded to crush the life out of the poor thing. The cat howled in pain. Miles away Ni Yugito awoke with a feeling of pain. A fellow feline is suffering kitten, Matabi says. I know Matabi but there is nothing I can do I am locked in Kumo in service to Reikage Sama I just hope that these humans will learn not to mistreat their feline companions, Yugito says sadly. I sense also a feeling of foreboding as if a great evil will reawaken soon. What do you mean Matabi? A shadow that slumbers will awaken and cast this world into fear of the night. What are we talking vampire? Yugito laughs but stops when Matabi doesn't follow suit. This is serious kitten I don't like what is going to happen. What do we have to fear from this force? Nothing if we don't cross its path. Okay Matabi I am going to go back to sleep. Yugito lays her head on her pillow and falls asleep again. Back in Konoha. Well team 7 here is your pay for the completion of your D rank come back tomorrow for more. The Hokage says smiling. Naruto bows to the Hokage. Of course my master. Then he and the rest of Team 7 walk away then Sasuke turns to Naruto. What was that about Dobi? What was what about? You bowing to the Hokage and calling him master. If I choose to respect the Hokage that is my business and not yours. Naruto starts walking away. You shouldn't serve him you should be serving a Uchiha an elite. That old man is a shell of his former self he is powerless. Naruto whips around at this comment. Karama can I borrow your eyes for a moment? Naruto growls. Fine but I don't like it. You will in a minute. Naruto's eyes turn a deeper red and his eyes slit, Sasuke Uchiha if you ever and I mean ever insult my master I will kill you. Unleashing a torrent of killer intent to emphasize his point. Sasuke drops to the ground and for a moment sees Itachi standing in Naruto's place with the Mangekyo Sharingan active. Foolish little brother if you wish to kill me then foster your hatred, despise me. The memory of Itachi's last words. Are we clear Sasuke? Naruto growls, this isn't the end Dobi I will make you bow to me. Doubtful. Naruto turns to Kakashi, you wanted to talk to me about something. 
Team 7 meet at training ground 15 at 7 a.m. Kakashi turns to Naruto and Seras and said. Yes Naruto Seras come with me I need to talk to you. Hi Sensei. Naruto and Seras said as they followed him to an abandoned training ground. Naruto I need to tell you something. Oh and what is that? Naruto asks. It's about trust. What are you saying? You only trust those who you know wouldn't harm you. Yay, but growing up the way I did that isn't unexpected. Yes, but I would like to tell you that you were able to trust me. Oh and how so? I am one of the Anbu who helped get you away from mobs by causing distractions. Really what was your Anbu codename? Inu. Based on your profile in the bingo books and your dog summoning contract that makes sense. I see you read bingo books to ensure that no missing ninja can take you by surprise. Yep. Well anyway Naruto see you tomorrow. Kakashi jumps off. Master what are we going to do next? Well we need to find a new home. What about your apartment? Well it's not the largest complex and the living conditions aren't the greatest. That's still not a good enough reason. I am sick of the abuse I get from the villagers and the fact they know where I live doesn't help. What about your current living conditions? I am going to kill the landlord and be on my way. Naruto smiles and he and Sarah's walk towards the landlord's of his apartment office. What do you want demon brat? She sniped at him. Quick as a flash Sarah's grabs her by the throat. If you ever disrespect Master Naruto in such a way ever again I will kill you. Sarah's grip tightens, do I make myself clear? DD demon lover, enough Sarah's. Naruto snaps, yes master, Sarah's lets the land lord go. You corrupted an inosent girl with you demon magic. The land lord roars. No I didn't and as for you I think it's time I moved out and as for this month's rent. Naruto pulls out the jackal and points it directly in her face. You don't scare me you have nowhere else to go. Don't care. Naruto pulls the trigger. The residual bang issued throughout the room a fist size hole in the wall and the landlord's headless cops. Keep the change you filthy. Naruto and Sarah's walk out into the Hokage's office. After 10 minutes they arrive. When they walk in the Hokage looks up from his paperwork while three others take a stack of their own. Naruto what a surprise I was not expecting to see you again so soon. Master I need a new home the one I have now is not the right place to raise a family one day. Very well Naruto do you think you have the necessary funds to purchase a house? Well the number of S ranked missions I have been on doesn't hurt. Naruto laughs. That is quite true Naruto. The Hokage laughs along. So what do I need to do? Unfortunately we need to talk to the civilian council about this. Naruto curses under his breath. I will call them in. Five minutes later the entire council was assembled as was Konoha law. What is the meaning of this Hokage why that boy here? A very large merchant shouted. He is here both as a bodyguard and because he wishes to buy a house for himself. Bodyguard what is wrong with the Anbu? Kaharu asks. Nothing I just know that Naruto is a very powerful deterrent for my enemies and he can take a high level assassination jutsu such as Kakashi's infamous Chidori and get back up. Never mind it. Danzo says, Naruto Uzumaki the council has heard your request for a new home but under what grounds do you request this? Under the grounds that the current landlord was downright hostile and tried kill us on multiple occasions using poisoned smoke bombs and even resorting to trying to use radiation poisoning. Naruto snarls. Well her actions were justified. Another civilian councilman says. Under what order did the Hokage issue saying that it was okay to attempt to kill one of his shinobi? Most of the civilian council shifted nervously as they had no such authority. Yes civilians where is the order making it okay to torture a shinobi of this village? The Hokage glared intently at them. Well we, um. A third councilman starts sweeting up a storm. Cowards if they lived in Sparta they would be executed for their stupidity and weakness. A cold voice that echoed with fury and power. Who said that? Alucard sensei was that you? Naruto was startled by the voice. No Naruto that was not me. Alucard responds, then who was it? I don't know Naruto. I will find out later then. Naruto starts listening to the Hokage chew out the civilian council. And if I ever hear of another INSTACE where Naruto was abused because of his power I will execute every single one of YOU. Serutobi yells. HHHHH Hokage-sama you don't mean that DD do you? Kaharu asks. 
Oiam deadly serious. Hokage sama, can we get back to the business at hand, please? Hiyashi asked. Of course, Hiyashi san. Serutobi smiles. Naruto, under laws set up by the Shodam Hokage, has requested a new home under normal circumstances. This would be a civilian matter only. But because Naruto is a shinobi, the shinobi council gets the final say on price, location, and size. That is not to say Naruto's opinion is not heard and taken into account. Naruto, do you have any preferences on any of the three categories I have just mentioned? Yes, I would like it close to the forest so that I may hunt for my food. Also, I would like a large complex because I would like to practice techniques. Naruto responds. Okay. Serutobi responds, turning to the rest of the council. Naruto has made his requests for his property. Serutobi gets an evil smile on his face. Civilians, I have decided to make this a purely shinobi matter, as such, you no longer have a say. There was instant protest. You can't do that. One civilian yelled, Oh, yes, I can. See, the only place that Naruto could get all he asked for is in the Eastern Shinobi District, as such, it falls under Shinobi jurisdiction, so I am within my rights to make it a Shinobi matter. Time skipped three hours and one incredibly annoying council meeting later. Are we almost done, Master? I am getting bored? Naruto asks. Almost Naruto I just need you to sign a couple of papers and then Saras will need to do the same and we will be done. Serutobi responds knowing the blonde's impatience with paperwork would make him hate the Hokage job but based on his chakra capacities he would be able to easily conquer this evil force. Naruto took the pen looked over the contract then signed it in the designated locations then handed the pen to Saras who looked it over and signed it as well. Alright Naruto here are the keys to your new house. Now the issue of building it leave that to me. Naruto smiles. The company that will have the materials for building are already at the location and all supplies have been delivered. They're a foreign company so they won't hate you for the Kayubi. How much is this going to cost me? Naruto asks, 5 million yen. Wow that almost as much as the bounty on Orochimaru. I know but houses aren't exactly cheap. I guess. Naruto smiles then walks out of the office and leaps toward where his house is. Sarah's following suit. After three minutes they land next to Naruto's new property. So what do you need kid? One of the contractors asks. First of a garden complex because I want this place to look nice. Alright what else? Naruto picks up a piece of paper and starts drawing out a traditional Japanese style home but in the front of the entrance where twin statues of a nine-tailed fox with a man in trench coat on top of its head. I want it to look like this. Alright then looks like we have a lot of work to do. The contractor turns to his men and says, start working we got a big order to fill. Then he turns back to Naruto and says, this could take a week at the least. But Naruto smiles and says, nope it will take a couple of days tops. Then he brings his hands together in the cross seal, Taju Cage Bushin no Jutsu. With a huge plume of smoke several hundred Naruto's appear. What do we need to do? The contractor looks shocked and happy at the same time. Alright you guys here is what needs to happen. Over the next couple of hours the clones and builders ran around building the new Uzumaki clan mansion. The original Naruto closes his eyes and naps then he hears a high female voice say. Mother. What's happening outside? The people. The fires. Naruto's eyes shoot open and see a small girl and her mother standing close to one another. Shish. Stay close. Calliope. The mother responds, Mother I'm scared. Are they coming to get us? Your father protect us. Then a strong male voice rings out. Burn this village. Burn it to the ground. Daddy. The small girl asks the sound of a door breaking down echoes out. Kratos. The older woman asks, Father. No. The small girl says. A grunt issues out and a short sword on a chain slices the woman and she screams and drops to the ground dead. No father no. A second grunt issues out and the small blade shoots out again then the girl drops to the ground dead as well my wife? My child how? The bald man asks in horror, they were left in Sparta. Then he roars, Ares, and charges out of the house and everything goes black. Naruto stands in the darkness for a few seconds then the Helsing Manor appears before his eyes. Alucard is standing there. Naruto what brings you here? Alucard asks, I don't know I was just taking a nap and then I heard a voice that I know wasn't yours or Kyubi's. What did it say? Burn this village burn it to the ground. That doesn't make sense why would someone want you to burn the leaf to the ground? I don't think he was talking about Konoha. 
All right, I have been feeling an odd disturbance in the Kyubi's lair of your mind. Head down there and look for the door that has the Greek symbol Omega on it. Alucard traces the shape Omega in the air. All right, Alucard Sensei. Naruto walks down into the dungeon looking for the Omega symbol at the last door on the right. He finally finds it. Naruto opens the door and starts walking down the hallway. He sees a huge mountainous city built with huge columns, and at the very right, there is an archway with the kanji for war. Naruto walks forward and when he reaches the end he sees a man in pale skin with a thick red line running down the left side of his face. His armor is adorned with two lions facing one another on the front and two rams for the shoulder pads and chains wrapped around his arms to the elbow. A scar runs down his right eye and he sits on a throne adorned in gold. So the latest Uzumaki presents himself to me. His voice is the same that spoke earlier during the council meeting and the same voice that spoke in his latest dream. Who are you? Naruto narrows his eyes and slowly reaches for the jackal holstered at his waist. Don't bother boy. The man says, why not I am faced with a stranger in my own mind and I shouldn't draw a weapon. Because it won't help you. Besides I am not going to kill my own flesh and blood. Pardon me. Naruto looks confused, to answer your original question I am Kratos, god of war, and you boy are my decedent. Okay now why are you in my head, because you hold my weapons. Kratos waves his hand and a small panel opens up and a weapon wall appears and on the wall are a different array of weapons. One is a pair of short swords that glow red and are adorned with a ruby-like eye, blades of Athena. Another pair of short swords that look as if a demon is trying to eat them they glow with fire and glow with power, blades of exile. A set of what appear to be boxing gloves that are shaped like lions, Nami and Cestus. A bow that has two snakes heads jutting out in front of the grip, bow of Apollo. A pair of multi-bladed whip-like objects that glow with electricity, nemesis whips. Two purple claws with two hooks each they seem to scream with the cries of the dead, claws of Hades. Strangely there is also of boots with wings on them that open like sandals, boots of Hermes. A golden shoulder pad that looks like it would run down Naruto's entire arm. Golden fleece. Then a second golden arm guard very different than the first but looks as would adorn the left arm. A. N. Yes that is the arm guard that Zeus wears during the final battle of God of War 3. I thought that it would be appropriate if he had two arm guards, finally a gigantic broad sword that looks like it was forged from gold and silver that and it has a hole in the center of the blade and it glows with a blue power and the hilt has figures reaching up the blade, blade of Olympus. What are these? Naruto walks over to the wall. These are the weapons that I used to kill my father Zeus after he betrayed me. Kratos responds. Are these for me? Naruto asks, yes. Well, I'll be one. The blades of Athena. Kratos points to the dark red short swords. Why can't I use that one? Because they require grace something that you lack. Okay then why are they here? For you to give to that Hanada girl. Of course Hanada chan has a lot of grace, beauty, are like candy, and her hair glows in the moonlight. Naruto's eyes glaze over. Focus. Kratos snaps, eh. Naruto shakes his head. Anyway these weapons will have to be burned onto your flesh. I have had worse injures. Naruto scoffs. Alright then here we go. Naruto grab the blades of exile. Kratos points to the one with the fire glow. Naruto grabs the blades and the chains glow red hot and wrap around Naruto's arms burning themselves onto his arms. Naruto just stands there and waits for the process to complete itself. After five minutes the chains stop glowing and Naruto stands there. Is that it? Naruto asks. Kratos stands there in shock as he is roared in agony when the blades bound to his flesh. What about those shoulder guards? Naruto points to the golden fleece and the other guard. These will adorn your left and right arms the one with the ram is the golden fleece the other was used by Zeus in a vain effort to counter the golden fleece. How will my body change in response to this power? When Alucard Sensei gave me his power I turned into a vampire and, as you can see, I took a new outfit. You would don my armor and the red mark of my brother that I tattooed on my body will adorn your left eye. Your trench coat will also change becoming more of a cape and you will wear my armor and finally your shoes will be the boots of Hermes. Your muscle mass will increase dramatically because back when I was alive I could bench press the hand of a titan and believe me when I say they are big. Alright Kratos OG San. Naruto smiles and with that a bright flash of light Naruto's new changes occurred. 
Naruto's mind also changed resembling Mount Olympus with three statues adorning the manhall. The one on the left showed Kratos. The one on the right showed Alucard and in the center stood the statue Naruto in all his power. Hey where is my statue? Kayubi roars from far bellow. You get something better. Naruto smirks. Oh and what is that? A realm to call your own and modify the way you see fit. Naruto points down to see the river of souls and Kayubi standing in Hades palace. Nice. Kayubi looks around at his new home. All right see you all later. Naruto fades from his mind. Time skip three weeks later. Naruto opens his eyes from his bed and shakes his head waking himself up. Naruto had decided to keep the blades of exile and all of Kratos power hidden. In the next room he hears a snoring noise and gets up groggily. Sarah's wake up. Naruto says. Just five more minutes please. Sarah's says. Naruto gets an evil grin and walks over to his bedside table and opens the bottom cabinet to reveal an air horn. Naruto grabs it and walks into Sarah's room then puts it next to her ear and presses the button the sound blares in Sarah's ear and it startles her out of bed. Sarah scrambles around for a couple of seconds then turns to Naruto and says. Master, that wasn't funny. Yes it was. Well for me at least. Naruto snickers. I don't get it. What's so funny? That's the point of a prank. It's for the enjoyment of the prankster. Okay. Sarah's looks at Naruto like he is crazy. Never mind it. Let's go we have more missions today. Naruto rolls his eyes at the thought of doing more D rank. Anyway Sarah's get dressed and I will meet you downstairs. Naruto walks out and then walks downstairs opens up the cabinet and pulls out a few blood packets and two wine glasses. After a few minutes Sarah's walks downstairs and sees the blood packs. Naruto pours blood into both glasses and holds one up to Sarah's. After they drink their breakfast Naruto and Sarah's walk toward the training ground 15. When they arrive Sasuke and Sakura are sitting by the logs. When Sakura notices them she gets up and stomps over. Naruto turns to Sarah's and whispers. Cover your ears. Naruto Baka you're late. Sakura screeches. Naruto rolls his eyes. Allow me to point out all the s I give. Naruto just stands there and does nothing. Well Naruto point them out. Sakura taps her foot. I did. What do you mean? You didn't do anything. Exactly that means I don't give a now leave me alone. Naruto scoffs and walks away sits down by one of the stumps and waits for Kakashi to show up. After an hour of waiting Kakashi poofs in with his signature I smile. Yo. He holds his hand up. You're late. Sakura screams at him. Sorry I got lost on the road of life. Kakashi scratches the back of his head. Liar. Sakura screeches. Naruto clutches his ears in pain and roars in frustration. Will you shut the hell up you bleading howler monkey? Naruto shouts his tolerance for Sakura screaming was over. Sakura looks over at him angry and ready to hit him when Sasuke looks over and delivers the final blow. You know Naruto I never thought I would say this but, thank you, Sakura's screeching was getting on my nerves. Piss off Sasuke. Naruto says offhandedly. Anyway. Kakashi sweat drops, let's go to the Hokage's office for our next mission. The four of them walk to the Hokage's office and walk in. Ah team 7 you're back, your next missions is, babysitting Yoju Sama's boy. Grocery shopping at the neighboring town. Finally helping dig up potatoes at a nearby farm. Naruto steps forward. Hokage Sama with all due respect I am sick and tired of these D rank missions I would like to formally request a more exiting mission. There's some truth to that. Sasuke thinks to this. What a troublesome guy. Sakura thinks glaring at Naruto for his earlier insults. I knew he was going to do this sooner or later. Kakashi thinks sighing. Aruka stands up and says. Idiot. You're still a fresh graduate. Everyone needs to start with the easy missions to gain experience. Under normal stances I would agree with you Uruka sensei but at some point every ninja needs to learn how to properly assess and survey a situation in order to protect the client during a mission. I think I speak for Sakura, Saras, and Sasuke when I say that we're ready to take on a higher rank mission. The Hokage and Uruka stand in silence then Serutobi bursts out laughing and after it subsides he says. I see your tongue is as sharp as ever Naruto. Very well team 7 I hereby grant you a C rank mission, bring in the client. Just then an old man walks in carrying a bottle of sake and takes one look at the team. What? 
A bunch of snot-nosed kids are supposed to protect me. I am so dead. One looks like his dog got run over. The girl with pink hair looks like she would collapse in pain if she broke a nail. The blonde kid looks as if he would kill his teammates rather than an enemy and the girl with one arm doesn't seem like she would be much help. The man says then Naruto turns and looks at him and says. Careful what you say old man you might just find it will come to bite you when you least expect it. Naruto you shouldn't threaten the client. Kakashi warns. Naruto walks over to the man and whispers in his ear. For your information I have bested titans whatever this little mission throws at me I can guarantee you I can handle. Naruto walks away and Kakashi says. Alright team 7 meet at the front gate in 2 hours for our departure. Naruto looks at Sarah's. Sarah's get your things together I need to go talk to Hanada. Naruto walks away thinking long and hard about what Kratos had told him about the head of Helios. Flashback. Naruto wake up we have things to discuss. Kratos voice echoed in Naruto's head. What the? Naruto wonders Naruto walks up the slopes of Mount Olympus and towards the throne room he, Kratos, and Alucard shared. Kratos stands up while Alucard polishes the jackal. Naruto there are two gifts I forgot to give you. What are they Kratos OG San? First the head of Helios ripped screaming from the sun god's body. With it your enemies will tremble at its light. Second are the wings of Icarus with them I was able to reach the Isle of the Fates and change my destiny and was able to start my path to revenge against Zeus. Why are you giving me a head that seems kind of gross? I understand your reluctance to use the head. I do have an idea though I have heard of what you call, seals, if you could employ a seal master to create a new headband for you that could employ the power of Helios' head. That could work though the only seal masters in all of recorded history are the fourth Hokage and Jiraiya of the Sanin. True though Jiraiya does have quite the habit of peeping at women at the local hot springs based on what happened with Sarah's. Alucard's murks at the memory of how the little flower he saved from death had become a proper vampire. That is true Alucard too San. Naruto laughs at the expression on Alucard's face. Stop doing that. Alucard yells at Naruto but he simply walks over to the edge of the throne room. I am going to try out my new wings and visit Fluffy but down there the time has come for me to remove the evil his heart. Naruto starts to leap but Kratos stops him. Naruto you will deal with Senor Fluffy but later. I wish you luck when that time comes through. End flashback. Naruto starts walking over to the Hyuga compound and sees two branch members standing there. Halt state your business with the Hyuga clan, one said. My name is Naruto Alucard Uzumaki and I am here to see Lady Hanada and Lord Hiyashi. Stay here. The other branch member says and walks off to tell Hiyashi and Hanada of the visitor. After a few seconds he comes back and says. Lord Hiyashi and Lady Hanada are in the backyard. Know your every movement will by watch to ensure the safety of clan head and heiress. Thank you. Naruto walks away into the compound. He sure is a polite kid I think Lady Hanada sees him in secret. The first Hyuga says. Yea he is nothing like what the elders say about him. The second one says. He and Lady Hanada would make a nice couple. That they would. They both smile at the thought of Naruto and Hanada ending up together. Naruto walks out into the backyard to see Hanada sparing with a chibi version of herself. After a couple of minutes they both stop and turn to Hiyashi. Hanada your speed and precision are amazing so I can say without doubt that you will make a fine Hyuga one day. Hiyashi says smiling at his daughter. Then he turns to the littler girl. Hanabi you have a lot of potential I know you can be a great kunoichi like your Nei-san. I will beat you one day Nei-chan. Hanabi glares at Hanada who smiles at her little sister. I am sure you will Hanabi. Hanada says, ah Naruto it is good to see you again. Hiyashi says noticing Naruto. It's good to see you as well Lord Hiyashi. Naruto says bowing. I assume you are here to talk to Hanada. Yes and to you as well. Me? Hiyashi looks confused. Yes Lord Hiyashi I am here to offer your daughter power that my ancestor Kratos once wielded. What power is that? The blades of Athena. Who is Athena? Hanada asks. Athena is the Greek goddess of reason, intelligent activity, arts and literature. Who were the Greeks? Hiyashi asks, oh right I forgot all knowledge was destroyed. Well basically the world looked very different and there was a society of people who worshipped twelve deities not too unlike today these deities were as follows. Zeus king of the gods and lord of the skies, Hera queen of all the gods, and also the goddess of marriage. 
Poseidon the lord of the sea and brother to Zeus, Hades lord of the dead also brother to Zeus, Ares the god of war and one of the most violent of the gods, Hermes god of roads, messengers, thieves and medicine, Apollo lord of the sun and one of two gods of archery, Artemis goddess of the hunt archery and maidens, Athena goddess of reason, intelligent activity, arts and literature, Hestia goddess of the hearth and home she tends the flames of Olympus, Demeter goddess of agriculture and spring, Aphrodite goddess of love and beauty, she is wife to Hephaestus, Hephaestus lord of the forge and fire he built the home of the Olympians. And Athena blessed Kratos with her blades. Yes, now I could stand here for hours on end and explain what happened with my ancestor but I will sum it up for you. Zeus betrayed Kratos and in a desire for revenge Kratos declared war on the gods using the titans to achieve it and in the end got his revenge on Zeus and killed him but in doing so he killed all the other gods except for Artemis, Apollo, Hestia, Demeter and Aphrodite. What do the blades of Athena do? Hanada asks, they will help you fight and they get stronger as you kill. I don't want to kill. I know you don't Hanada chan but it's the unfortunate fate of a ninja. Naruto takes out a sealing scroll and wipes some blood on it and in a poof of smoke the blades of Athena appear. Hanada when you use these blades they will have to be bound to your flesh and it will hurt but I will stand by you then entire time. Naruto holds out the chained weapons. Hanada reaches out her arms and the chains slowly wrapped around her arms. When they were wrapped around her arms Naruto grabs her hand and Hiyashi grabs the other. Then Hanada screams in pain and her grip becomes vice-like on Naruto and Hiyashi and after 5 seconds she stops screaming and the chains had cooled down. Lady Hanada are you alright? Several branch members rush out to see Naruto, Hanada and Hiyashi standing there. Yes I am fine thank you for asking. Hanada smiles then looks at the blades and a look of pure bloodlust encompasses her face. Hanada-chan. Naruto places a hand on her shoulder and she snaps up and looks at Naruto. Sorry I was having visions of what your ancestor did when welding these blades and let's just say that I liked what I saw. Hanada smiles. Alright Hanada-chan I have to go I will be gone for a couple of weeks on a C-rank mission. Naruto s Hanada on the cheek then walks off. Hiyashi smiles and walks over to Hanada. What did you see? He asks, if Naruto-kun is anything like Kratos-sama I am seriously going to enjoy our honeymoon. Hanada walks off a slight spring to her step. Hiyashi shakes his head. Just like Hikari a closet pervert for the man she loves. Hiyashi laughs then walks back into the house to see the clan elders standing there and they didn't look happy. Oh boy here we go. Hiyashi Hayuga we demand you forbid that boy from seeing Hanada he is corrupting her with his demon ways. Hiyashi's father, Ryuk steps forward. No dad I won't and I would love to see you fight Hanada for the right to see him. Hiyashi smiles as his father's face pales as he remembers the look of bloodlust on Hanada's face. F fine but I won't be held accountable for her fate. Alright Ryuk sama your funeral. Hiyashi walks away and into his office when he finds a small scroll on his desk addressed to him. Hiyashi opens it and see a note as well as a few blade techniques. The note read. Dear Hiyashi-sama, I forgot to give this to Hanada so if you would do so I would greatly appreciate it. This scroll will tell Hanada-chan how to use the blades of Athena, if I were you I would get this to her fast though she will have a natural talent for the blades without these move sets she could become dangerous those blades may be from a kinder goddess but they are still blades and still imbued with the powers of Ares. Many thanks. Naruto Alucard Uzumaki Namikaze, aka the Godem Hokage and your future son-in-law. God these are complicated. Hiyashi looks over at the dance moves of the blades. I swear that kid is going to make one hell of a son-in-law though I pity their children's teens. Hiyashi's eyes widen in sudden fear of the concept of grandchildren that behave like their father. Oh God, I am going to watch my back wherever I go. Ten minutes later at Team 8's a training ground Hanada has the blades of Athena on her back. When Kiba notices her he walks over chest puffed out in an air of superiority. Hey Hanada would you like to go out after training today? Kiba asked. No Kiba and if you ask me one more time I will let you taste these blades. Hanada pulls the blades of Athena off her back. A cute girl like you shouldn't carry dangerous weapons like that. Kiba tries to get closer but Hanada grabs his throat. Naruto-kun is ten times the man you will ever be in every way and don't think I won't kill you just because you're my teammate. Hanada holds up one of the blades in a threatening manner. With that Hanada throws Kiba ten feet sideways and walks off to practice with her new weapons. With Naruto while this is happening. 
Alright Team 7 our first C rank mission. Kakashi gives them all thumbs up. Naruto looks at Sarah's and says. I have a weapon for you that I thought you could use because most people will rely mostly on short range. Naruto opens a ceiling scroll and pulls out a large, curved blade that emanates with a purple energy. Thank you master. Keep it hidden or out in the open your choice. Naruto walks away Sarah's places the blade on her back. Sasuke looks at Naruto expectantly when Naruto does nothing Sasuke gets agitated. Well Dobi. Sasuke, well Dobi, what? Give me a weapon. No, Naruto walks away and towards Kakashi and says. Let's just go so we can get this mission over with. Alright team 7 let's move out. Kakashi says defusing the situation. Yes sensei. Everyone starts walking away Naruto walks while thinking on ways to purify Kurama of his hatred. Saras and Tazuna were talking animatedly while Sakura tried to get Sasuke to talk to go out with her. After about 4 miles of walking Naruto noticed a pool of water. Odd it hasn't rained for at least a week and with this road in direct sunlight. A trap? Naruto thought in confusion. Years of being ambushed had Naruto on high alert and realized that whoever the ninja were that they were after Tazuna. Naruto positions himself to be able to react. After everyone passes the puddle two ninja emerge from the puddle two people rise from it bound by a chain. They rush forward and wrap the chain around Kakashi and they pull slicing him to bits. Kakashi Sene. Sakura screams. Naruto reaches for his pocket for the kujual then whips around and fired of a shot between a link in the chain shattering it. Well the kid in armor isn't bad I guess this isn't going to be as easy as we thought, one says. But all he has done is give us more freedom of movement. The other says. Naruto looks at both of them and draws the jackal and smiles. Then bring it. The two brothers charge Naruto hacking and slashing at Naruto who looks bored while he dodges. After 60 seconds of dodging Naruto gets sick of it and points the kujual in the older brother's face, checkmate. Naruto pulls the triggers on the gun and the residual, bang. Issued throughout the forest. The older ninja dropped to the ground dead with most of his head missing. The younger one looks over at Naruto horror stricken. My brother, you kill my brother. Naruto walk over to the corpse and sinks his teeth into his neck and starts drinking the blood. Sakura, Sasuke, Tazuna and the younger brother look on in horror as Naruto drinks. After a couple of seconds Naruto gets up blood dripping from his teeth. Now, why don't you tell us why you're here? Naruto says licking his. Go to hell. The man says charging in but Naruto grabs his hand and twists it behind his back breaking the arm and then shoots the other limbs off. You have lost, Maizu. Yeso? Now I have to read your mind. What, by drinking all of your blood? The Maizu starts whimpering like a dog. WWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWW
Naruto you should have left one alive so we could get some information out of them, Kakashi says. Don't worry I have all the information we need, then do tell. They are working for a man named Gado who has hired them to take out Tizuna-san. Their associates are Zabuza, Demon of the Bloody Mist, and some boy named Haku who will most likely disguise himself as a hunter ninja. Naruto looks over at Tizuna. You have you a lot of explaining to do. If what I saw was correct then this is no longer a C rank mission but more along the lines of a low to high A rank. Naruto says. Well I am sorry Wave Country doesn't have the funds for an A rank. Tizuna says. I know. However while I am sure Kakashi, Saras and I could handle it but Sasuke-san and Miss Pinky won't shut the up, who by the way I would love to see die, who can't handle it. Take that back Naruto Baka. Sakura screeches. Naruto glares at her his red eyes glowing. If you don't stop screaming I will kill you. Naruto says lazily but the threat was clear. Kakashi then clears his throat and says. Naruto, Saras, Sasuke, and Sakura do you guys want to continue the mission? I say we go for it I want to give this bloody wanker a piece of my mind. Saras says. I am in no one gets the right to say Uchiha is a coward. Sasuke grumbles. I am in I want to show this Gado what a real monster looks like. Naruto grins viciously teeth still dripping with blood. I think we should go back I mean even with Sasuke-kun we're still only Genin. Sakura says. I am sorry Sakura but with three out of four team members agreeing even if I vote with you were overruled. Kakashi says. Besides, do you want to be the one to tell Naruto he can't get his revenge? Kakashi eye smiles as Sakura looks over at Naruto her eyes widening in horror as Naruto looks over at her his eyes gleaming. A right let's go then. Sakura says. After traveling for 50 minutes Naruto looks over to the left and pulls out the kujual and fires a shot into the bushes and a scared looking rabbit runs out. Scared of a small rabbit loser? Sasuke asks smirking. If you look carefully you'll see that this rabbit has a white coat meaning it's been raised indoors, therefore its only purpose is to be a substitution. Naruto points out. Good conclusion Naruto which means we should, duck. Kakashi shouts and he grabs Sasuke, Sakura and Saras pulling them to the ground, however he couldn't help Naruto and could only watch in horror as his sensei's son was decapitated. The sword continues and hits a tree then a figure in pajama pants lands on it. Well seems that I already got one ninja. That seems to make my life easier. The figure laughs. Seems for all your prattle you couldn't even handle a single attack. Just goes to show you that you're nothing compared to an elite like myself. Sasuke smiles. So that brat is nothing more than just that, a brat. Zabuza growls. Naruto. Sakura cries out in horror, if he is our opponent then I will need to use my Sharingan. Kakashi thinks lifting his headband. Kakashi of the Sharingan eye am I right? Zabuza asks. Sasuke's eyes widen slightly. Now quick magi formation. Protect the bridge builder and stay out of this fight. Kakashi says. Kakashi then finishes lifting his headband exposing a fully matured Sharingan. Hold on a minute everyone keeps saying Sharingan, Sharingan. What is the Sharingan? Saras asks. Sharingan. A rare power it resides in the eyes. The user of this visual jutsu can instantly see and comprehend any ninjutsu, taijutsu, and genjutsu and reflect the attack back on the attacker. The Sharingan is a special rare form of dojutsu. However there is a lot more to the Sharingan, a lot more. Sasuke says. You got it right boy, but you only scratched the surface. The Sharingan can analyze an opponent's attack and copy it to the smallest detail. Zabuza says. Then mist rolls in. As for you Junin in the assignation unit of the hidden mist we has a special order to destroy you on sight. Your profile was in our bingo book. It called you, the man who copied over a thousand jutsu. Kakashi, the copy ninja. What? As Kakashi sensei such a famous ninja? Sakura thinks to herself. Wow that is so cool. Saras says, wait a minute the Sharingan is a rare trait that only appears in a few members of the Uchiha clan, my clan. Could he be? Sasuke thinks. Zabaza's eyes narrow. Enough talking I have to destroy the old man, now. Then team 7 creates a protective formation. So I have to eliminate you first eh, Kakashi. So be it. Zabuza grabs his blade and rips it from the tree and leaps onto the sea. He is over there. Saras shouts, standing on the water. Sakura exclaims. Then the water starts whirling as Zabuza holds his hands up. 
He is building up a huge amount of chakra. Kakashi notes. Ninja art. Hidden mist jutsu. Zabuza says then he vanishes. He vanished. Sakura notes then Kakashi steps forward. Sensei. He will come after me first. But who is he? Zabuza Momochi, ex-leader of the mist's assignation squad and a master of the silent killing technique. Silent. Questioning Sarah's, as the name implies, it occurs suddenly and without any sound or warning. You leave this life so quickly that you don't even recognize what has happened. Remember that the Sharingan cannot completely neutralize it, so be cautious. We will only lose our lives if we fail, though. You can't really say that. Sakura inquires when the mist thickens significantly. Sasuke remarks, the mist is growing thicker and thicker. The mist envelopes Kakashi as Tazuna remarks, the land of waves is surrounded by ocean the swirling mists are ever present. Sakura says, her voice full of terror, Sensei. Sakura gasps as Zabaza's voice yells, eight points. What is that? Sakura queries larynx, back, lungs, liver, kidney, heart, jugular, and subclavian artery. What will my kill point be now? Subsequently, Kakashi releases a chakra wave to clear the mist while making the ram symbol with his palms. What a voracious appetite for blood. A single, short breath or little eye movement is all it takes to instantly kill someone. I'm going to lose my mind if this continues. I have never felt anything so eerie as the collision of two Junin with the intention of killing. It feels like my life is being cut off, says Sake as he begins to draw his kanai closer, threatening to cut his own throat. No, I can't handle it, I'd rather take my own life, Sake says. Kaizen. He is shocked out of his reverie by Kakashi's harsh voice, calm down. I will protect you with my life, all of you. I promise not to let my allies perish in fear of me. Zabuza's voice echoes, I wouldn't be so sure. Suddenly, Zabuza is behind all three of them, and as Kakashi turns to face him, he finds himself in the middle of their formation. Zabuza begins to swing, but just as he realizes this, a loud, bang, occurs, severing his blade in half, creating a hole in Zabuza's shoulder, and causing him to explode into the water. Sakura, Sasuke, and Sarah's search around for the source of the sound, and they all spot Naruto smoking. Looks like he was a clone. Naruto chuckles. Oh well the real one must be around here somewhere. I killed that little brat, Zabuza thinks horrified, impossible. How on earth did he stand back up? Naruto laughs and steps forward as another Zabuza appears from the ground behind him. You can't count me out just yet. Master, you have me behind you. When Sarah's yells, Naruto turns around and shoots the jackal, causing Zabuza to burst into water once more. Naruto then searches for the actual Zabuza until Zabuza's voice echoes. Kakashi of the Sharingan, you're wide open. Then Zabuza appears behind Kakashi and kicks him into the water. Now. Then Zabuza grabs his sword and runs after Kakashi but then stops. Makabishi spikes. Wanting to take my time. Stupid. At that point. Zabuza dives into the ocean. Sensei. Sarah's yells, I can't believe Sensei got kicked through the air like that. Sakura is thinking. Sasuke remarks, he has great physical skill too. Then Kakashi emerges from the sea once more. Kakashi thinks, this water isn't normal, it's denser. Suddenly, Zabuza sneers from behind him. Zabuza begins to gesture, fool. Water prison jutsu. Shit. Kakashi shouts, this prison is made of water but it's stronger than steel. Escaping underwater was a bad mistake. Zabuza raises one hand and says, Water clone jutsu. Now I have you where I want you, but now I must eliminate your little friends. Get the bridge builder out of here, Sakura, Sasuke, Saras, and Naruto. He's using all of his might to keep me here because the clone can't follow you this far. Not a choice, says Sasuke. That choice vanished the instant you were caught, Sensei. Zabuza's clone speaks exactly like he does in the manga. Do you believe I haven't killed anyone? Looking at him, bored as hell, Naruto. Naruto responds with a smile, no you haven't, kid. Turn to page 57 of your bingo book. What? Zabuza appears astonished. Without hesitation, Naruto says, you heard me. The clone approaches the original and takes out the bingo book, which he looks at and reads aloud. Naruto a la carte Uzumaki also referred to as the Nightwalker, Naruto the Cannibal, and the Unkillable, is a 13-year-old with a rank of SS with abilities including sharpshooting, advanced regeneration, 
wall climbing, and calling out dogs made of pure shadows. My go-to weapons are a 13mm battle pistol and a semi-automatic combat handgun with a 454 caliber. Special notes. S rank approach cautiously and avoid confrontation. Backup of 2S rank required for confrontation. B rank and below run for your life. A rank, don't approach without at least 7A rank ninja as backup. 27S rank, 15A rank, 1B rank, 0C rank, and 30D rank missions have been finished. Notes on the preferred weapon. Avoid being hit. These are powerful weapons that can instantly collapse an organ, including the lung. A cannibal. Since no one is aware that Naruto is a vampire and he sucks blood, Kakashi assumes that's where they are getting it from. Shit. The only backup we have is Arisa, but she's kind of S rank, so maybe she can help. The clone then puts the book back and stabs the ground, secretly signaling Arisa to fight with him. Arisa thinks to herself, you know what they say you only live once. She leaps down, drawing her dual Uzi, and says, Zabuza-sama needs my help but, that's Naruto the unkillable. Arisa, you take Naruto, my water clone will handle the others. Zabuza responds. Yes, Zabuza-sama. Arisa responds, firing at Naruto, who returns fire. Arisa begins to escape the bullets, but she is hitting Naruto hard, and the barrage of blows propels them far into the surrounding forest. He isn't even trying to dodge the bullets. Does he believe he is indestructible? Then a few more rounds connect, everything has a breaking point. He may act uninjured, but he is taking a lot more damage than I am. I'm able to defeat him. Then Naruto bursts with laughter. Again laughing, Naruto responds, Yes, wonderful. I haven't had this much fun in ages. What did you say your name was? It's Arisa, Arisa Momochi. It's clear, Arisa Momochi, that your abilities surpass even the strongest vampire classification. Art Restriction Systems. Releasing Control 3, 2, 1. Situation A is approved, and the Cromwell invocation is initiated. Limitations on abilities lifted for restricted use until the enemy has been silenced. Insert Alucard's transformation sequence. Arisa flees at first sight, but as soon as the dogs open their mouths and Naruto's arm shoots out, revealing the jackal in hand, a shot is fired, sending Arisa's leg flying off. She begins to hop away, hoping to get away, but the second shot explodes, blasting off the other leg and spinning her forward due to its force. Who are you? Who the devil are you? Arisa yells. Naruto grabs one leg he fired off, saying, Come on, get up. Attack me you only suffered the loss of your legs. Summon up your familiars, transform your body, heal your severed legs and stand. The evening is still so young. Naruto crushes his leg. Come on hurry, hurry, hurry. Pull yourself together the fun has just begun come on hurry. Arisa cries, monster. Naruto stops, then smiles. So I see you for what you really are, your pathetic nothing but a sniveling lump of meat. Shut up your nothing but the Hokage's toy, a dog for the land of fire not even fit to call himself a vampire. A pup. Silence. Naruto bellows, cutting her off. I am a dog. Naruto grins and growls, then your dog food. As Baskerville roars and charges forward, he eats away at her flesh, turning her into nothing in a matter of seconds. The blood from Arisa starting rushing into Naruto. Is that all you had? It's such a shame I overestimated you. As a vampire you were just a pathetic piece of shit now you're nothing but dog shit. Zabuza didn't seem like much but they are having more trouble than I would have expected. However only Sarah's is the only competent one among us. Naruto is walking towards the others. But Kratos and Alucard are conversing quite a bit inside Naruto's mindscape. When Naruto releases to level 0 we have a small issue, according to Alucard. Kratos queries, about what? Well my old sword would be nice but I think the blade of Olympus would suit better, however when using his vampiric abilities he can't use anything you gave him. I see so how do we change this? Well the only way I can think of is for you our powers to fuse and therefore allowing Naruto to access both at once. No that won't work the merge wouldn't work our powers are too different. We could have you fuse with Naruto, and then he could access both our powers simultaneously. That might work, Kratos muses. Yes and then Naruto could change the Kujual and the Jackal into the Blades of Exile. Okay, I'll get in touch with Naruto once he goes to sleep. Returning to Naruto, Naruto and his companions arrive, 
the water clones have been vanquished, Zabuza is giggling, but even Sarah's is worn out. Shaking his head, Naruto takes out the Kujul, points it at the real Zabuza, and fires a shot. Guess I am stepping in. The bullet was headed straight for Zabuza, but he was able to avoid losing one arm because to his quick reflexes and keen senses. Unfortunately, Naruto had targeted the hand that was keeping Kakashi imprisoned in the water, thus Kakashi was released. The fight between Zabuza and Kakashi is equally intense. Holding a kanai in his hand, Kakashi says, his Sharingan spinning, I see your future Zabuza. And it's death. Kakashi slays Zabuza with the kanai, but three Sanban stab him in the neck. Then a figure in a light-colored suit and a hunter's mask. I thank you for your assistance in taking him down. I have been trying to track him down for weeks. The individual replies, playfully asking, you're a hunter ninja aren't you? Naruto. Yes I am. Then why don't you destroy the body here? As much as it is standard procedure to destroy the body on site each method of elimination for each village is different as such I can't destroy the body here in order to avoid giving away missed village secrets. Sarah's thinks, liar. Subsequently, the hunter ninja leaps from Zabaza's body. Kakashi approaches his pupils on foot. Kakashi begins, well, Tazuna-san, let's head back to your, and suddenly passes out on the ground. Fearfully, Sakura exclaims, Sensei. Naruto approaches Kakashi and takes a big breath. He is alive, he is probably suffering from chakra exhaustion, adds Naruto. Then Kakashi is picked up by Naruto just below the shoulder. Sarah's give me a hand with Kakashi would you? Sarah's sheathes the blade of Artemis and picks up Kakashi with her good arm, saying, yes, master. Naruto inquires, Tazuna-san, where is your home? Tazuna answers, about a couple of miles northwest. All right, Tazuna hold on to Sasuke and we will be leaping toward your house. Who died and made you king loser? Not now Sasuke, Naruto yells. Our sensei is down and we are in a foreign territory. Code of conduct dictates that, in the case of two ninja of equal rank the one who has completed the most missions takes seniority unless otherwise directed by the Hokage. I have completed a lot more missions than anyone here if you recall correctly I have completed 27s rank, 15a rank, 1b rank, and 30d rank missions, therefore I hold seniority. Naruto responds. Sasuke-kun should hold seniority as he is better than you, Naruto Baka. Sakura screams. Naruto uses a burst of killer intent to quiet them both. Let's move before I have you both brought up on insubordination charges. Naruto yells. After Sasuke's shoulder tackles Tazuna, the four of them run in the direction of Tazuna's house. When they get there, which should take ten minutes or so, Naruto approaches and knocks on the door. A little while later, a young woman opens it a little. Hello, the girl says, looking a little alarmed at Tazuna. She yells, Father, and gives him a hug. I thought you were dead. Tazuna declares, If not for these super ninja, I would be. Enter now. She says, glancing over to see Kakashi draped over Sarah's and Naruto's shoulders. What happened to him? Sensei is suffering from chakra exhaustion. Do you have a place we could set him down so he can rest? Naruto inquires. Yes come with me upstairs, there is a guest room on the far end of the hall. Thank you, Ms. Tsunami. The Tsunami answers. Naruto and Sarah's bring Kakashi upstairs and lay him down on the futon. Thank you. After that, they shut the drapes and exit the space. Then, noticing that Naruto's left belt loop is glowing, Sarah's turns to face it. Um master your left belt loop is glowing. Sarah's responds. Naruto asks, what? As he turns to face his belt loop and detects the glow. Naruto wipes blood over the seal after biting his thumb, and a tiny handheld mirror materializes that he calls, the mirror. Naruto leans against the house and passes through the wall. Naruto grinned, Hanada-chan. Naruto-kun, a beaming Hanada exclaims, How are you? Good, good, Kiba still being a pervert but I have drawn the line. I can kill him if you want. No, that won't be necessary Naruto-kun. All right listen I know it's kind of late but I need you to go to the Hokage and bring the mirror with you. What's wrong Naruto-kun? What I have to say is only for the Hokage's ears but you need to stay with him because the mirror only works for you. Okay, Naruto-kun, hold on, I'll go talk to him. 
Hanada then appears to be going quickly, as her vision begins to blur. A little while later, Hanada speaks to an unseen person. Excuse me I need to see Hokage-sama. With a secretary's voice, of course, Lady Hayuga. Hanada's image begins to tremble. Hanada this is a surprise. To what do I owe the pleasure? Lord Hokage I have Naruto here and he wishes to speak to you. Naruto, how is he here? Then Hanada's face vanishes and the image displays the Hokage's visage, saying, Naruto gave me this powerful mirror that allows me to communicate with him no matter how far apart we are. Well then, what did you want to talk to me about my servant? Naruto states, it's about our mission in Wave. What about it? It's now at a high A rank mission with appearance of Zabuza Momochi. So what do you want to do about it? I request a backup team. And which team would that be? Team 8 for backup and scouting and team 10 for defensive backup, explains Naruto. Good strategy Naruto, I will call them in and send them on their way. Naruto bows his head and says, thank you, my master. Naruto go inform your team of backup. Naruto seals the mirror in his belt and says, yes, master. Sarutobi and Hinata were staring at one other back in Konoha. Hinata go get your sensei and teammates. Yes, Lord Hokage. Hinata bows and turns to head toward Kurenai's house. She is startled by a disturbance behind her, but she quickly draws Athena's blades and activates her by Akugan. With a roar of pain that breaks the night, Hinata throws the blade into the darkness behind her. What the hell Hinata? exclaimed Kiba's damaged body. You should know better than to sneak up on a Hayuga you see ever since the Hayuga incident my clan has gotten quite paranoid and I am no exception. Hinata narrows her gaze. Well now you have discovered who I am could you please deactivate your Bayakugan. You had a motive to follow me Kiba I want to know what it is. Kiba thinks to himself. Shit, I was planning on using this chloroform to knock out Hinata and get my way with her but that plan just went to hell. Well I might as well lie and get out of this. His chakra flared wildly as Hinata realized he was lying. I was just out on a walk and I saw you with a small mirror in your hand heading towards the Hokage's office, so I followed you to see what was going on. Liar. Kiba asks, what? As he begins to perspire. You were planning something and I have a feeling that it revolves around that handkerchief in your pocket, Hinata growls, drawing back her swords. The Bayakugan can tell when a person is lying, Kiba. I would kill you right now if our squad wasn't required for a mission of a high rank. Are we required for a mission of a high rank? Kiba inquired. Yes, now go get Shino and I will go get Kurenai Sensei. Why do we go together? Damn, if I am going to get away with this, it better be before she gets Kurenai Sensei. Kiba muses to himself. No, Kiba, I don't trust you. Hanada then turns to go her Bayakugan still in motion to make sure Kiba doesn't try anything. Ten minutes later, Hanada reaches Kurenai's house, knocks, and Kurenai answers in a bathrobe. Kurenai looks very puzzled and says, Hanada, Kurenai sensei, Lord Hokage needs us for a high rank mission. What level? Kurenai's eyes expand, a rank. With whom are we traveling? We are going to back up team 7 and team 10 will be joining us. What took place? The client lied about the severity of the mission they had to face the demon Mist Brothers and Zabuza Momochi. Okay, come inside, I'll change, and then we'll go get Shino and Kiba. Kurenai ascends the stairs as Hinata enters and takes the mirror from her waist and peers at it. The mirror shimmers and then Naruto's visage appears for a few seconds before he says, show me the bird of Hermes. Hinata, Naruto exclaims, his expression beaming with joy. Naruto's eyes enlarge, when I get to you, Naruto-kun, I need you to turn me into a vampire. Why? He queries. Kiba tried to rape me tonight he is getting desperate I want to become a vampire before it's too late. Are you certain? This choice is important. I am sure Naruto-kun. All fine, Hinata-chan, you can use a couple of my Uzi as your weapon. Before I leave, though, bear in mind that the sun should only symbolize searing agony and a tortuous death once you have turned your back on it. I understand Naruto-kun. Then Hinata's attention is drawn away from the glass by a cough, and when she looks up, she sees Kurenai standing there with an angry expression on her face. All right Hinata-chan, I will turn you as soon as you get here. The mirror shimmers again, and Naruto's face disappears. Am I understanding correctly? 
Has Kiba attempted to rape you? Yes he did Kurinai sensei. I stopped him before he could try anything thanks to my Byakugan and the blades of Athena. Hanada and Kurinai walk out and see Shino and Kiba standing there. Kurinai glares at Kiba but ignores him for now and the four of them walk towards the Hokage's office. After five minutes of walking they arrive to see Team 10 standing there. Kurinai glares in anger. I will be having a small chat with Kiba when I see him. Anyway let's go we have a mission to report for. Sarutobi remarks, good you're all here. Why did we get named Hokage-sama here? Azuma queries. Team 7 has run into problems and is requesting backup. How is Sasuke-kun doing? Ino appears frightened. Everyone is alive and well but they need your help. What took place? Choji queries. They have encountered an A-rank missing ninja and require backup. You can probably guess who said, I bet Sasuke-kun kick his butt. I don't know who chased off Zabuza Momochi but I can take a guess. It starts with A-N and ends with an Naruto. Sarutobi thinks about it. Yes, Sasuke-kun. Nope. Who was it then? Naruto. Kiba sneers, liar that Baka couldn't scare a fly much less an A-rank missing ninja. Do you gorge yourself on the living? Do you drink the blood of those who would stand against you? Hanada interjects. Has your name been entered into the bingo book? What is the purpose of your questioning? Kiba gives her a scared little glance. Because Naruto-kun does, he has to eat people to survive, he has to drink blood to keep up his strength, and Naruto-kun is in the bingo book if you care to look. Anyway back to my point the eight of you will be backing up Team 7 you are to depart immediately gather your things and leave. Yes, Sir Hokage. After 10 minutes, they all assemble at the front gate, and the eight of them answer and depart. As Azuma exclaims, okay, team eight and ten, let's go. The eight of them take off in the direction of wave country to support team seven. Finally, we shall see you in the following video.